What's up everyone, my name is Taylor Welch. I am the co-founder of WealthCap Holdings. If you're watching this, you might be familiar with my work and Chris's work and our contribution to the advertising marketing world. Uh, but I wanted to give you some details into our real estate company, why we started it, how we're running it, why it could potentially be a good investment for you. And then people are asking me, um, what are you guys doing? How is it working? What, what happens if I put some money uh, into WealthCap? Is it safe? What are the returns? What does everything look like? So this video, maybe 20, 30 minutes long, where I just wanna go over some of the math and our model, we're in three different markets. We're adding a fourth market here pretty soon. We'll probably add a fifth market uh, sometime in the next 12 months. And so I wanted to give you some insight into how everything works. So first and foremost, there are two different sides to wealth cap holdings. So Traffic and Funnels, which is my other company, uh, me and Chris are investing our own funds every single month. Look for the investments where uh, the people at the top are actually investing their own money into it. That's typically a good sign. That's for free. I'm just going to give that to you just so you have it tucked away somewhere. But there are two sides to wealth cap. The first is promissory lending. I'm not going to go over that right now. There's a different video that some, uh, our team can send you on how that works. It's pretty easy. You put a, a certain number of money into the funds and it pays you. We wire transfer money to you every month. You just wake up with more money than you had last month. It's pretty good. The other side of the business is actually buying assets from WealthCap. And first and foremost, you need to know that WealthCap, we created it to put our money into it. And people started finding out, clients started finding out. And I looked around like our clientele. We've you know, had almost 10,000 uh, clients over the year, uh, over the last four years. And a lot of these people come in and they start getting abundance, they start getting high income. They don't know what to do with their money. Uh, they've just got a war chest of money, but they don't know how to actually escape working for money and get into the place where their money is working for them. It's a different type of deal. And so people were finding out about what we were doing and they wanted to be a part. And we said, let's figure out how to get some assets that are in good markets with healthy returns into the hands of some of our entrepreneurial clients. And it's turned into this awesome thing where everybody wants to see the numbers and buy houses from us. So I'm gonna give you an, an overview of how returns work, what you need to be thinking about uh, if you're gonna be getting into real estate. There are typically four buckets of returns. Now, this didn't come from me. Uh, I, am, uh, I have some experience in real estate from five, six years ago. We bought 6,000 houses while I was an agent at this company, almost a billion dollars in management. So I, I know the game, but the four buckets of returns precedes me, and I'm going to walk you through it today. Uh, these are the things you need to be aware of, and then I want to show you why WealthCap is so different and, and so weird. We had a bank in Missouri uh, a couple weeks ago, they were like, why are you not buying this house? It's an amazing house, it's an amazing deal. And we were just like, it doesn't meet our standards. It doesn't meet our criteria. Our criteria is unheard of. We're easily at the top of the pack when it comes to our criteria. But the first thing you got is you have appreciation. Appreciation is when obviously you buy an, ice, an asset and that asset gets more valuable as time goes on. Keep in mind here that uh, inflation is actually reducing the value of the dollar by 3% year after year after year. If you put a bunch of money into a regular bank account, uh, typically a business account will earn you 2% interest year after year. You're losing three, you're gaining two. What is that? A negative one. So you got appreciation. We're going to shoot for 2% appreciation. Now, most, most people factor 2% or most people factor this number in general into your returns and we do not. I believe that appreciation should be a bonus. It shouldn't necessarily, necessarily be something like, what happened in 2008 is people bought houses that were appreciating, that weren't good on the other four buckets, and then in 2008, 2009, uh, the market went backwards. So things appreciated downwards, they deflated, they lost all their money, they lost all their assets. You don't want that to happen to you. This is the first bucket, appreciation, and we have a minimum 2% uh, historical appreciation for every house that we buy. The second is equity pay down. Equity pay down is when you get a house, uh, and let's say that that house, the mortgage on that house is $800 a month, and the tenant occupying the property is paying you uh, $1,300 a month. Um, you're gonna cash flow a decent amount, but what's important to factor into the equation, at least on the buying side, is that $800 a month, a portion of that is going to paying down the equity on the house. 
okay? You've got uh, P&I, taxes and insurance. You have uh, the actual mortgage, which would be equity pay down. And then you've got interest on the mortgage. And so equity pay down, we see typically two to four, uh, sometimes even as high as 6% on equity pay down. And again, these are things that turnkey companies, the, they're adding this to the ROI. Not a good thing. Because if you only buy a house because the equity is being paid down, that means that if a recession hits and you are really counting on this and the bank calls back a bit of its loan or you know, you just want to stay away from, I think you want to stay away from using these two things in your calculations. The third is depreciation. Depreciation is like you can write off you know, a portion of what you owe in taxes. You can write this off. This will actually work against your income. There's some like nuances and complications to this. This is just variate, like it's gonna be a variable depending on how expensive the house is. But the fourth bucket is your cash on what? Cash. Cash, baby. Cash on cash. Uh, this is the most important thing to look at, in my opinion, because when there's enough profit in the deal, when there's enough profit in the money that a tenant is paying you month after month, what happens is you can store that reserve. Uh, so that even if you lose a tenant or um, if, if the house goes backwards and it depreciates bad during a recession, it doesn't matter because this is an income producing property. Our minimum standard here is 15%. Uh, when we, when I was working at the, the turnkey company um, back in the day, we sold thousands of properties that were doing like 6% cash on cash return. 6%. And people were doing it. Do you know why? Because they were doing 6% plus 2% here, plus 2% here, and they were factoring in some weird thing on depreciation. And so they would tell this investor, this is an 11% return, which still isn't very good, but it really was was not an 11% return, it was, it was a 6% return, and then if the market did exactly what you wanted it to do, then it would, it's unwise. So this is why uh, people are, we have a waiting list of properties, because every single house we buy has a minimum 15% cash on cash return. That means if you put, uh, let's say just use simple numbers, if you put $10,000 into a house, it's gonna profit you $1,500 a year, and that's a pretty decent return. So we just sold a house, uh, it's getting locked up right now, it's 22%, not too bad. So these are the four buckets of return. Wealth cap stays exclusively inside of cash and cash. That's how we sell our deals. You're like, hey, why, um, why would you sell this house that's doing 15% uh, if, why wouldn't you just keep it? That's a pretty fair question. The reason is because we have, we're have we putting a certain amount of our own money into deal flow and into creating assets. Like I said, there are entrepreneurs that have all of this abundance and they have this income. They don't know what to do with it. We're making that available to people. So let me, uh, let me show you how we're actually doing this operation. What does our deal flow actually look like? If you went into Branson, Missouri, or Birmingham, Alabama, or Charlotte, North Carolina, or soon to be Raleigh, North Carolina, soon to be Nashville, Tennessee. If you look into our markets and our staff and how we're doing deals, uh, this is how everything works. So what we're doing is we're going and we're buying houses that fit our criteria. And what are our criteria? Remember the previous slide? 2% appreciation, 2% equity pay down, and 15% Cash on cash. Cash on cash. There's another criteria though that we add. We need to be able to get this house into the hands of an investor while guaranteeing that there's 10K in equity in the deal, right? Be like walking into a, a clothing store and saying, I like that jacket. Can I have that jacket? And by the way, will you give me 10,000 bucks? It's basically the same thing. 10% free equity as soon as you get into the deal. So here's how we're doing it. Uh, we'll go out, we'll find a house. Let's say this is in Birmingham, Alabama. There's another video that we could do on how we pick our markets. We're not gonna get into it right now though. Say we, we go to this house and they're trying to sell this house for 80K. And we are gonna negotiate them down to 70 grand. And we're gonna buy this house in cash. Cash money, 70 grand. Cause we're rich. Just kidding. It's cause we know what we're doing. We're gonna buy it in 70K. Then we're gonna turn, put 40 grand into the house. Now are there houses that you can get that you don't have to put 40 grand into? Absolutely. 100%. But because of our model, we want to find the houses that, you know, they may be 
20, 25, 30 years old, they've never been renovated and you know, they need uh, new HVAC, they need new plumbing, all right? They need a new roof. Now, if you're at the, if you're at the turnkey company that I worked at before, they're gonna be like, oh, this roof has 18 months left, we're just gonna sell it to an investor and they'll have to fix it afterwards. But we're actually trying to decrease capital expenditure for the investor. So we could probably get away with putting 20 grand into this house. Nobody would know, but we would know. And so we're actually going through, we're saying, what are all the major things that need to be taken out, renovated? Is that actually a house in Alabama that we're working on right now that we actually are ripping out all of the floors in this property and putting in brand new floors, beautiful hardwood. Uh, why are we doing that? Because dude, for the next 10 years, I want this to be a cash producing asset. Not for two years, 10, 15, 20 years. Anyways, you get the point. So how much are we all in on this deal? $110,000 in cash we're in on this deal. Now, once this is done, it's gonna take 60 to 90 days for this to be completely turned around. $110,000 in cash. Remember, what do we buy the house for? Seven. This is going to appraise for 150, 160K. How do we know that? You know, we got comps, we can look at historical averages, we can look at, here's a big one, price per square feet. So we know when we get the house that this is an undervalued asset, right? Like every other house on this street, the price per square feet is, is X, but they're, they're trying to get rid of this house for 70. This is an undervalued asset. This is something we can pick up, we can renovate, we can sell for more down the road. Make sense? So $110,000 into the deal. This is gonna appraise professionally by an appraiser in Alabama for 150 to 160. We've done this, we're doing this right now. We have four houses that we're doing this with in Alabama. We have two houses in Charlotte. We do three or four houses a month in Missouri. We're only, we're really only trying to get, these are good deals we're trying to keep. We're not, we're not making our money off of flipping houses. We're making our money off of you know, the $15 million a year marketing company that's attached to this. So these are deals that we're going in, we're doing for ourselves and we're trying to keep. Every once in a while though, you know, we will have all of our money in the market that we want in the market at a time, and we'll say that's still a good deal. Is there an investor that's interested in this? That's why we have a waiting list out for the next 60, 90 days, because most of these houses we're doing right now, we're actually keeping. But get on the waiting list because there will be a day we wanna sell something to you. 150 to 160,000 dollars, we need to make sure that there's 10K in equity in the deal, right? So if the ARV is at 160, what do you think we're gonna sell it for? We'll sell it for 150, because that gives you $10,000 in free equity, right? Right. That's not, I'm not saying that if the house is 160 grand, we're, immediate, you know, we're immediately gonna sell it for 150, because there's a second constraint, and that is 15% what? Cash on cash. So if the rent on this house is $1,000 a month, uh, selling it for 150 is not gonna get 15% cash on cash because the notes and the way that the math works, if the rent was $1,000 a month, uh, profit on this would probably be 2,800 to 3,000 a year, and if you had to put 30, 30K down, that would be 10%, that would violate our standards. So another way that we're buying houses, we're making sure we're doing it the right way, is rent range. And this is why the bank in, in Branson thought we were crazy, because uh, we were going into deal that would have had uh, at least 10 to 12K in equity, and there were renters in it, but for us to hold on to it, the ROI would be under 10, and our standards are 15. So we said, no, we're gonna pass on it. They said every other investor would take this deal, and we're like, well, this is the difference between a company who is doing something to make money versus a company that's doing it you know, to do the right thing and really to hold it. So this house, probably if we're in Alabama, if it's ARV for 150, the chances are that this house is probably gonna rent out for 1,400 a month, okay? 1,400 a month, if we sold it for 150, that's a $30,000 down payment. Let's just say it's $6,000 cash flow per year. 6,000 at 30,000 is 20% cash on cash, 10K equity. Would you buy that deal? What's the S&P doing? Like historical 100 year average for the S&P is like less than nine. 
So we're seeing this is more than double and it's real estate. Real estate is the oldest investment class in the world. There's nothing that's been around as long as real estate. And so I hope this is making sense. Anyways, what we're looking to do next year is we're actually taking our model and you know, traffic and funnels and wealth cap, like between everything like me, I will probably buy 15 to 20 houses personally next year from my own company. Uh, the holdings company itself, we will buy and hold between 10 to 12 properties per month next year. And if there is a surplus of deals, historically we've been saying no to those deals because we don't need them or want them. But what we're doing for the next uh, foreseeable future is we're saying yes and we're picking up those deals and we're making them available to you if you want them. So hope this gives you some more information. Uh, again, we are probably the safest guys in the game and in the space right now because we do not depend on any of this for money. This is something we're doing for long-term investment. These are the four buckets, 15% cash on cash. And uh, if I were you, I would figure out how to get into the game with us as soon as you can. We have a waiting list, probably somewhere underneath this page. And when we do have something available, they usually go within about six hours. Why? It's amazing. These are deals you're not gonna find anywhere else. So stay tuned, check your email. If you have any questions, reach out to us. We would love to talk to you and uh, have a great day.